Welcome to Barbasul Nature Reserve. I'm Bennett Hennessy, the Development Director for Asociación Armonía. And I am Luz Natalia Mercado, the Blue Throat Macaw Program Conservation Coordinator. So right now we're here in November 2021. So the, the surrounding ranches burn every year for their cattle, so we have to sort of protect the reserve from that. So what we do is in, like maintain a 70 kilometer fire break system uh, to protect foraging forests for the blue throat macaw. And at the same time this year we start experimenting with back burning. So one of our current fire breaks, we decided to burn a strip, a line next to it, so we would make sure that our line was wide enough to protect the forest. Right. So this was our first time trying to do that and we think it was pretty successful. We would we had hoped that tourists would come in 2021. Um, we've had a few, but with the COVID continuing and, and at one point the Bolivia Bolivian government requiring a quarantine if tourists arrive, which sort of made it less attractive. But um, we are still preparing everything. So where where are we now for tourism? So we are ready. Like we are re ready for tourism, and we had in total seven tourists this year, right. and we are really happy that they came to Arbasul and all their expectations were even more than fulfilled. So right. like we are happy to receive people here and to when they leave Barbasul they always want to return or they always want to become friends of Barbasul because well they had I think a great experience watching wildlife. So one of our tourists uh, this last time was able to see a main wolf. Right. And that's that was a very exciting moment for her. That and that is the spectacular thing of Barbasul, we're not burning this grass here. We're totally protecting the wildlife. We don't have cattle running in this area and the mammal populations are just radically increasing and the mammals are becoming tamer. So things like the howler monkey now you can see very easily. So you daily see capybaras. There's three species of deer here, uh, giant anteaters possible. It's, and maybe it's, a puma. <laughs> yeah, maybe a puma if you get really maybe lucky. A puma. In April, we've hired two new staff members for Barbasul, and you've been working sort of getting them up to speed. So Miguel and Tania have adjusted really quickly, and Tania is all, it's prepared to receive tourists, and the surveys are telling us that everyone that's come here is really uh, happy with the attention they receive here. So we are in the process uh, of designing with an architect a new house for the staff. So our team is growing and like we are trying to make a place that is comfortable for them so they can live here with their families and they can have a nice place to, to stay all year long basically. Right. So we are coming up with different ideas and we are figuring out like how is the best way so they can be comfortable and especially in the high temperatures that we have here. So we hope to raise funds for maybe next year to start building this new house for them. As it is here, it's a very strong rainy season, everything floods. So any kind of construction like that, we have to, we can only start really in June or July. So that's sort of the plan for next year. We're having an architectural design and then hopefully be able to raise the money to do that. And, and then you've been, involved in some other project that sounds really interesting. So um, one of the environmental issues that is happening uh, right now and is that forest islands, the main habitat for blue throat macaw, are getting degraded by cattle ranching. So you already have a video of it, you yeah. can find the link below, yeah. but what we are trying to do now is trying to uh, promote regeneration or reforestation in these forest islands. So we are going to try to uh, research on what is the best method that is cost effective for cattle ranches and that can be replicated across the landscape and is also uh, successful to promote restoration of the motacupa, which right. is the, the main uh, food source for the blue thromaca. Right. Sí, soy Miguel Martínez, yo soy el guardaparque principal de la Reserva Natural Barbasul. Entonces, ¿qué, ¿qué estás haciendo acá en la Reserva? Nosotros acá realizamos actividades de monitoreo de la Parada Barbasul 
Eso nos permite más o menos estimar cómo están sus poblaciones, ¿no? Sí. Eh, hacemos monitoreo de vida silvestre, patrullajes para supervisión de que no se cometan ilícitos ambientales dentro de la reserva, inclusive hasta, hasta afuera, ¿no? ¿Y, ¿Y este año había un entrenamiento contra fuego? Claro. Okay. Hemos sido capacitados a través de un taller de varios días, ¿no? A través de quemas controladas. Que, que hacer, que, que no hacer relacionado a la, al manejo, ¿no? Generalmente de, de, del fuego en, en sabana, principalmente. Sí, sí. ¿Y, ¿Y vos tenés ideas para mamíferos, proyectos que quieres hacer? ¿Puedes explicar un poco de claro, eso? Claro, vamos a recopilar todos los datos de, de años anteriores y el trabajo que, que actualmente estamos haciendo con, con monitoreos a través de cámaras trampas para generar la primera lista generar la lista formal ¿no? de los mamíferos de, de la Reserva Brava Azul. Igualmente pues, vamos a generar este, una guía didáctica ¿no? para, para el visitante, para el turismo, que, que la turista que venga acá sí. y pueda conocer la, la diversidad de mamíferos que, que hay dentro de la reserva. Uh, Miguel had an amazing puma experience and we made a video of that and that's the link here if you want to have a look at that. It's pretty impressive. Miguel travels around with the camera. So sometimes you get some pretty interesting shots of mammals in the reserve that you could come see if you come to visit. I'm Chala Borsma, Conservation Program Director. We've been talking about the updates for this year, 2021. What's going on with our sustainable cattle project? Yeah, so we're now at approximately 50% of the amount of cattle that we need. We have uh, placed more paddock fencing We purchased electric fencing, it is also for managing uh, habitat, and one of the habitats we're managing here in Barbosa Nature Reserve is riverette shortgrass, and that's the critical stopover habitat for migrating buck-breasted sandpipers. So we have been playing around a little bit with stocking rates in different paddocks uh, to see whether that is creating favorable habitat for buck-breasted sandpipers. We see that livestock actually keeps the grass short up until six centimeters. That's exactly what the, what the birds are looking for. We've, we've also put together a video explaining the buck-breasted sandpiper uh, migration and its stopover site here in Bolivia. And you can see that link there. And, and so you've done something even more with Buff Breasted Center for this year. What, what exactly. are you up to? So since 2014, we're monitoring systematically buff-breasted sandpipers here in Barbasol Nature Reserve. Uh, we believe that buff-breasted sandpipers are using multiple areas within the Beni Savanna ecoregion. So this year we did for the first time a full census throughout the ecosystem, six teams. Uh, we surveyed 1,200 kilometers, uh, finding buff-breasted sandpipers and finding that specific habitat they require. The highest count during the survey was 144 individuals at a single short grass site. Here in Barbasu, we had 1,500 individuals. So apparently Barbasu is attracting large numbers of buff-breasted sandpipers and have that ideal habitat they require for the southbound migration. Right. I mean, this all happened. Um, we were doing a census of blue to macaws and we found that this area had the highest concentration of bluetooth macaws and the ranch was for sale so we bought it and now we're finding this also area has the highest concentration of buff breasted sandpipers so it sort of indicates there must be something the nutrients the soil the history that that's a, it's a fa it's a preferred place to forage and it's very isolated We're 75 kilometers from Santa Ana de Yacuma, 70 kilometers from Santa Rosa it's mm. in the heart and the center of the Llanos de Mojos yeah. hard to reach and maybe that is favorable yeah. for many species. Long. A very interesting observation this year, we yeah. found uh, again a pair of uh, Ibira seed eater. Uh, we still don't know what's going on yet. It's an endangered species. It uh, appears in uh, Argentina, but we see it now here in Barbasol Nature Reserve. We've seen it in other sites in the, in the, the Beni Savannah. And we kind of like have to study and understand the movement patterns or behavior of this right. other endangered species that is now found in Barbasol Nature Reserve. Oh, we used to say, well, there's seven birds, you come here, you have to see. And with our tall grass protection, we now have to add in another bird, the Ibera seed eater, which is pretty, if, if you're out there and you're looking, we're finding it. It's, yeah. it's not like a, a one-time thing. Um, so, yeah, it's pretty, pretty cool. And I think a product of the protection that we're doing. Yeah, and habitat recuperation.